Hello, I'm Dr. John White, Chief Medical Officer at WebMD, and welcome to Coronavirus in Context. Today, we're going to talk to someone who has contracted the coronavirus, hear their story, and find out how they're doing. My guest is Dr. Sharon Amaya. Dr. Amaya, thanks for joining us today. You're so welcome. Now, first of all, how are you doing right now? I'm actually doing much, much better. Um, I'm about day 13 um, <clears throat> currently, so I feel like I really turned the corner about three days ago. Tell us your story. It's, it's a fascinating one. So um, approximately two weeks ago, um, I had just traveled to Vail for a few days of fun snowboarding right. um, and felt great while there. But as we returned um, back to Atlanta, um, heard about an outbreak in Vail, um, which of course that was during the time that this was blowing up in the United States. So not surprising, um, but kind of niggled in the back of my mind. Uh oh, I was just in a hot spot, um, but woke up the day after we got home with a little bit of a sore throat. Okay. And that feeling, how you know you're coming down with something. Mm -hmm. You're kind of like, ah, something's just not quite right. But I didn't feel ill mm -hmm. at all. Um, progressed through that day just with a sore throat. Um, the next day, I did develop more of a dry cough along with okay. the sore throat. And I had actually a lot of congestion, um, some nasal congestion. Mm -hmm. um, Do you have a fever? Yeah. You know what, at that time, I did not have a fever, um, was checking periodically, um, nothing over 99, okay. uh, so technically no fever. Mm -hmm. um, and then as the next couple of days progressed, I definitely started getting more of the severe body aches that you hear about. Um, a lot of just neck, back, and headache pain. Um, and then that just general malaise and not feeling well, along with, uh, again, more of a continued dry cough. And what were you uh, thinking at that time? Were you thinking coronavirus or were you thinking flu or just, you know? I got my flu shot, I just like everybody <laughs> should. I got my flu shot, so I did not feel like I had the flu. Um, and again, I really, I didn't have these high fevers that go along with both of those illnesses with this COVID as well as the flu. Yeah. And um, what was happening with your husband? Because you talk about your husband and symptoms. And he actually, exactly the same symptoms. Mm -hmm. um, we pretty much mirrored each other and we traveled together and we actually have the same job. Okay. Um, so we both work in the emergency room. Mm -hmm. um, so we were good sounding boards for each other. It was mm -hmm. kind of like, hey, could this be the coronavirus? Um, and by two, three days in, I think enough symptoms um, that we felt like, I think we need to know only because of work. Could we- Were you, were you quarantined at the time? We self-quarantined. Okay. Um, at this point, we luckily didn't have any upcoming work shifts. Okay. Um, we didn't need to go anywhere. There wasn't an urgent need for toilet paper at that time. Um, <laughs> So we pretty much self-quarantined and knowing at the time, and this was only two weeks ago, but as you know, things have just rapidly progressed. Had I gone to the Department of Public Health or work and said, hey, I want to get tested, there just weren't the tests to be done. But you're um, an emergency medicine physician. But I had not been, I had not had fevers, number one. And at that time, they were pretty much really focused on the fever aspect. Yeah. And I had not been around a known coronavirus patient at that time. Yeah. Um, so really, even with my job, I didn't qualify. I, I know. It's, it's, it's when we think about it, it's a little shocking that, that here you are a health provider and, and you can't get a test Correct. at that time. Correct. And, and, and things have hopefully progressed to where we are more able to get these testings. But at that time, um, simply because we wanted to know, I just Googled Atlanta area labs doing the coronavirus. And I found one um, in Sandy Springs and actually ordered two kits um, at that time. And they sent it same day and I got it that very next morning um, by FedEx. Did you have to pay for it? Because you ordered it yourself to do at I home. Did. 
Is that they right? Did. It, okay. was, it was reasonably priced and I felt like it was worth knowing. Um, again, simply for work purposes, right. not necessarily because I felt that ill. But your institution um, wouldn't do it. Wouldn't I'm do sorry? the test. That, your institution would not do the test at, at that time. Is at that, that right? time, they really didn't have the tests okay. available. Okay. Um, we were at that time reserving them for patients who were so sick that they were being hospitalized. It impact their treatment ultimately. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So um, we got the kit um, and we self swabbed. Um, did you self swab each other or did you? No. <laughs> did you or you no. do your own? You I did, did my own, own and okay. my husband did his own. All right. um, and uh, we followed the instructions uh, included in the kit mm -hmm. and uh, sent that back same day. Um, in the mail or did you leave it outside to be collected? Uh, we had to take it to a FedEx okay. uh, location. All so. Right. Um, so we dropped it and um, they had sent it overnight mm -hmm. and that was on a Wednesday that they received it and I had my result um, on Thursday afternoon. So it was a very quick turnaround time from that lab. Um, and the results the were, I've seen. The results were positive for you, correct? They were positive for me and negative for my husband, um, which I assume is a false negative because no. he has had the exact same symptoms. Um, you so had I said you didn't maybe, follow the instructions well. That's, that's my right. technique was better. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, um, and that is, again, an interesting uh, aspect of this is can you rely on the, the, the test entirely? And probably right. not. If it walks like a duck, talks mm -hmm. like a duck, um, it probably is COVID-19. And there are some issues with predictability of tests and also getting the right sample we talked a little bit about that you know are we getting are we doing the swab correctly you're obviously more educated and experienced in it but it, it could be a challenge for others if they have Correct. to self swab not exactly knowing what that means and 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 what's considered a good swab that's why i asked right. if you had done his and he had done your so. right. no thankfully no okay. uh, we were responsible for our own so and then what were you taking for medication were you taking anything for fever or pain um, um so really my go-to is usually ibuprofen um but with the some of the studies coming out of france that hey might not be the greatest idea to take during this time stuck with tylenol um, we're not sure about the ibuprofen right now and NSAIDs, but you know prudence um, so really just um, Tylenol, sometimes Tylenol, cough and cold, if I felt mm -hmm. more congested or the cough was bothering me more than just the body aches. Um, and Did you ever then, get short of breath? Did you ever lose your breath? Um, certainly, I'm pretty active. I typically work out on a regular basis mm -hmm. and the only times I've actually felt short of breath is with minimal activity during this, walking up a flight of stairs heart rate would shoot up and I would feel yeah. winded for a good minute and then I would recover. So in terms of shortness of breath, just with exertion, but not at rest at all. What was the worst symptom? Was it the cough? Was it the, the fatigue? What? I think it, it was the fatigue and just the body aches, um, but more the fatigue, just having no energy. And this was after sleeping 10, 11 hours uh, a night, which I allowed myself to do. Um, so it was just that kind of overwhelming fatigue more than anything else. The cough, I've had much worse in the past. Um, with how, many days, how many days did this go on? So I'm uh, currently day 13, um, mm -hmm. feeling so much better. Energy is much improved, mm -hmm. no body aches. Mm -hmm. um, the cough is improving a lot. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not taking any medications. Mm -hmm. um, it's still there to a degree to the point where I'm not going to run out to the grocery store yeah. um, because I feel like the cough is one of the most contagious type symptoms. Um, and so I'm just giving it a little more time, but I feel markedly better. How many tough days did you have out of these 13 days, would you say? I'd say three to four, three mm -hmm. to four only. Mm -hmm. Do you think being a physician mattered in, in terms of, you know, how you thought about coronavirus or, or managing your own symptoms? I, I think so. And, and not that I wanted my husband to be sick at all, but it was a nice sounding board and kind of, hey, how are you feeling? And then he'd, he'd ask me the same thing and yeah. kind of having that knowledge of, 
let me check my heart rate. Um, our fancy watches also have a oxygenation level. Oh, wow. Have, okay, uh, that is fancy. So yeah. you can do spot checks of oxygen uh, levels just to be on the safe side. Um, so just, and just keeping up with the knowledge of, again, there's really no cure or fast remedy and all these uh, old wives tales of, of doing this or that. Just again, the good old fashioned advice of just sleeping, drinking plenty of fluids, generally taking care of yourself is the best medicine. Well, that's good advice. And, and I'm glad to hear you're, you're doing much better. I wanna thank you for taking the time to talk today. Absolutely. I hope uh, everybody can stay safe out there. Wash your hands. Stay at home if you can. So. And thank you for watching Coronavirus in Context. I'm Dr. John White, the Chief Medical Officer at WebMD.